get right is this notion of let's remove some of the artificial inhibitions in making the language easy to use. So Java, C++, C Sharp, all of those languages sort of defined the set of operators that we could overload, right? Java said that set was basically zero unless you worked for Sun Microsystems and then, well, okay, we're allowed to do operator overloading, but nobody else is, right? For string concatenation, string plus. C++ said, as C Sharp said, well, there's a set of operators, a bound set of operators that you're allowed to overload and just make sure that the semantics look the way you want them to. So if you're thinking about it and you say, wow, you know, I'd love to do kind of like C++ did with the you know, double less than as sort of the stream insertion operator, but you know, double less than doesn't quite look right to me. I'd really like it to be less than, less than exclamation point. I don't know why you just want it to look that way. Well, C++ said, nee, you can't. You just can't. You're just done. Scala says, yeah, go ahead. You want to create your own operators? Go right ahead. If they make sense to you in the domain that you're working in, go for it. We want to remove some of the linguistic inconsistencies from the programming language so that you have maximum flexibility, maximum consistency, that you, so you don't have all these weird rules. We're going to see some of this stuff as we go through the, <clears throat> as we go through the Scala syntax. This is some basic high-level elevator pitch kind of text about Scala. A couple of things to notice. It is a pure object-oriented language in the sense that every value is an object. One of the things that we've wrestled with in the Java space for pretty much, let's see, what are we going now, 14, 15 years, ever since Java was introduced, you have your primitive types and you have your classes. And there's this gap in between the two of them. How many people have played around with Java 5 generics? Uh, not yet. Well, good. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> Anybody wondered why you cannot do a list of int? Because it has to be a list of integer. The reason is because Java doesn't allow you to do generics around primitive types. Because under the hood, a generic type actually goes from list of integer or list of string, and it just turns into a list of object. And you can't put an int where an object is expected. We have to box it and turn it into an integer in order to be able to store it where an object reference is expected. Scala says, this is stupid. Let's just admit that an integer is an object. Why not? Smalltalk's done it for years. Now, and, and about this point, those of you who had a C++ background Right, that you sort of you know, forced down into the corner when you decided you wanted to actually stay employed. Those of you who had a C++ background said, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. An integer is a four byte value and you're telling me I'm gonna wrap it into this huge object, right? You're basically gonna bloat the size of this thing. No, the Scala compiler is actually pretty smart. Where you start doing one plus two Rather than saying, oh, this is an object and this is another object and I'm invoking a method and we have to create a stack frame and all that. No, if it's a one and a two and a plus, the Scala compiler is going to recognize that and turn that into an int, int with a single opcode instruction to add the two of them together. The compiler is much smarter than we've traditionally considered compilers to be. In the Java community, we've often thought of the Java C compiler as a relatively stupid thing. It doesn't know how to do optimizations. It doesn't know how to, I mean, the Scala guys are much smarter about this. And it creates a much cleaner syntax and a much more extensible and flexible syntax. We'll see that in a second, too. The second part of the paragraph, Scala is a functional language in the sense that every function is a value. Now the key thing to recognize here is every value is an object, every function is a value. Therefore, by definition, every function is an object. We, as traditional with functional languages, we can pass functions around as parameters. We can manipulate them just as we do any other first class citizen inside the language. And this is going to represent a different way of thinking about programming that is going to basically cause your head to warp just a little bit. 
sort of the physical, but usually at some point halfway through this presentation, I start watching people's heads kind of, you know, you can hear it, right? If you listen very carefully, people's heads will start popping at certain points during this presentation. And that's a good thing because it's going to show you different ways of programming and in many cases create more elegant ways of solving problems that we don't have good elegant solutions today, right now, in the traditional Java space. Bit of history, um, these slides are slightly out of date. The latest version is actually 2.7.2. Um, some foofy stuff just from the Scala documentation. Every value is an object, every function is a value. Uh, supports currying, nested functions. Uh, we still have some of the traditional object-oriented stuff. It's a statically typed language. As we go through this, you're going to be looking at certain code and thinking, gosh, that looks a lot like Groovy or that looks a lot like Ruby because I'm not specifying a type specifically in my code anywhere. I'm letting the compiler figure it out for me. It's not that these are untyped variables. It's that the compiler is smart enough to figure out what those types are. So if I say def x equals quote howdy world close quote, in the Java world, again, I treat the compiler as if it's stupid. I have to say, hey, string x equals quote howdy world close quote. Do you think it doesn't know that that's a string on the right-hand side of the equal sign? I'm just curious, right? Scala compiler is much smarter, and this is, again, as I mentioned this morning, if you were there for the F-sharp talk, this is a concept known as type inference. It's going to figure it out. If it can't figure it out for whatever reason, the compiler will let you know. That's what they do. But in a surprising number of cases, it can figure it out. And it will oftentimes figure it out in a more generic fashion than if you'd written the code explicitly by hand. All right. Step one. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let's see here. Uh, for dev, whoops, yeah, close enough. So I'm just going to bring up brutally simple text editor. Yes, create this. Oops. Okay. Okay, first of all, got too many microphones running around around here. Let's compile this and compiler's not actually that slow. It's because I'm running inside of a virtual machine. Notice what I get is a couple of dot class files. So let's do this, Scala, hello world. There we go, right? There's everybody's favorite example. Yes, you may applaud if you wish. It's not really worth applauding for, but you may if you wish. Now, if this is a traditional straight up class file, I should be able to execute it using a traditional Java syntax. So let's just make sure of that. Java, hello world. And it fails. It says specifically, no class def found error Scala slash Scala object. Like Java programs themselves, Scala depends on a runtime library that goes with it. And if we look at where, whoops, if we look at where Scala is installed on my box, we look inside, eh, keep hitting the return instead of the backslash, look inside the lib directory, we see scala-library.jar. So, Java class path, the current directory, and prog, Scala final, lib, Scala library.jar, hello world, and voila. Okay? Proving that anything that you write in Scala can, in fact, be executed using just plain Java semantics. So if you want to build servlets in Scala, if you want to build JMS clients in Java, you want to build EJBs in Java, you can. You just got to remember to include this jar file. Okay? Having said that, let's look back here at said code. What's different? 
What do you notice that's different? You don't get to answer, Neil. You want that smaller? Sure, I can do that. Is that better? Because if the answer is no, dude, you really need to see an eyeglass guy. <laughs> but Neil is old, and that's okay. How's that? Is that better? <laughs>